know, first it was the housing crisis and now student loans that could threaten the economy. Right now, there is more than a trillion dollars out there borrowed by folks trying to get through school who now can't get jobs on top of that and may not be able to pay it back. And attorney Jonathan Fruitkin joins us this morning with uh, some of the alarming statistics. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a double-edged sword, isn't it? It really is, because on one hand, you need to go to school to get a good job, and that's right. what everybody tells you to do. On the other hand, the cost of school increases, and one thing that we know is that the student loan debt is increasing and increasing. And then when you can't get a job to pay back those loans, wow, that's a double whammy. Let really? me throw some stats out for you so you can see these. First of all, college graduates owe an average of just over $25,000 in student loans, and then parents take out on average loans of 34,000. So we're not talking small numbers here. No, and it, you know, even if you look at students who graduated from public universities in Arizona, that number is still over $20,000. So what happened in 05 to change things? Well, the bankruptcy laws changed. Uh, as recently as 1990, student loans were dischargeable in a bankruptcy so long as you'd been making payments for a period of years. That changed. Well, in 2005, Congress took it a step further. Now private student loans aren't even dischargeable. This means the loans that you get from the federal government, the ones with the deferments or the income-based repayments, those haven't been dischargeable, but now even the ones with the higher interest rates that you get from the bank aren't also. Wow, so you file bankruptcy thinking you're getting it out of your loans. Nuh-uh. Nah, nah, that just doesn't happen. Right. So it, what, what, they come after you, right? They do. They come after you. We do have clients who file Chapter 13 types of bankruptcies, a bankruptcy where they'll repay as much as they can over a period of years. But what we're seeing is an emerging trend of people who are perpetually having to file bankruptcy to prevent garnishment of their wages or of their bank accounts. How many times can you do that? Well, we do have people who file bankruptcy repeatedly in order to avoid the garnishments. And the problem is that it takes these people and puts them in a permanent state of bankruptcy. Oh. And of course, that's no good for the community. No, it's not. So any uh, ideas or suggestions for folks with student loans? I guess plan early would be one. Plan early is number one. Uh, first of all, doing a 529 account for uh, a, uh, a child, that's the type of account where you put money away for college and get a tax break is important to do before someone goes to school. But once you go in school, the number one best thing to do is avoid those private student loans. If you need to take out an amount of money that's reasonable, use the federal program. That way, at least there's programs in place in case things go badly. All right. Jonathan, we appreciate the insight this morning. We Thanks really do. Thanks for coming by.